Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are having the about last videos for the second chapter of advanced digital signal processing. So in this video, we are going to again have the MATLAB demonstration as like into the previous video. And now this time we are going to deal with the quadrature mirror filter. The entire concepts related to the multi-rate digital signal processing, we started with the interpolation and the decimation which are the very important that is why we call them the key operations of multi-rate DSP along with the demonstrations into the MATLAB also. So now we are able to have sampling rate changed by any value that can be obtained as a ratio of interpolation and decimation factors here. With the knowledge of multi-stage interpolation and the multi-stage decimation, the polyphase decomposition, we have reached the concept of quadrature mirror filter. The block diagram with respect to the quadrature mirror filter, we are already studied into one of our previous lectures. So let us implement those concepts and whatever the response that can be offered by having such a quadrature mirror filter that we shall try to be plotted here in the MATLAB environment. So here we shall be beginning with the topic. So here we start with the topic. The topic is MATLAB program performance of quadrature mirror filter. So here we shall be taking a simple task to be implemented into the MATLAB environment here. So we name it with the start MATLAB program to illustrate the performance of quadrature mirror filter. So let us switch to the MATLAB environment. So in the MATLAB environment, we first of all take untitled script here where we can program here. Now we shall begin with first of all close all, clear and CLC. So now the program execution for this particular case can be with the fresh one. Now as we know that the quadrature mirror filter can be designed with the help of various ways. There are many kind of QMF filters or filter banks you can see here. So a typical one example we are going to select here. So let us first of all comment what exactly we are going to deal with. So here we are going to write a MATLAB program. So this is a program where we are going to plot the responses so that the performance evaluation can be obtained here. So program for as we are going to plot the responses and that too into the frequency domain. So I shall be writing frequency responses of frequency responses of QMF filters. So the filter that we are going to deal with in this particular MATLAB program is sometimes also referred by Johnston's filter that you can find into the standard textbooks here. So this is the QMF filter and here we shall be entering the prototype low pass filter coefficient first of all to start with. So we separate out that particular script to initialize with the coefficients of low pass filter. So whatever the problems with respect to the QMF filters you can find into the standard textbook, you can accept the coefficients that have been computed by the design of those filters and provide it as input to this particular program here. So now for accepting such an input which is the coefficient of the design filter here we shall be initiating with the variable capital B1 here. So to the variable capital B1 we shall be assigning the value with the help of MATLAB command input so that will take the value from command prompt here and onto the command prompt initially after the execution of this program it will print the syntax string here to enter the filter coefficients space equal to sign so this command can be ended with the help of semicolon 
Now for the obtained input values from the command prompt for the same variable b1 we are going to arrange the values into the array form as we are taking the b1 values as it is and the same number of elements we are getting flipped left to right right to left whatever you can take so for that purpose we have the matlab syntax so as we are going to flip the values here so those values are on to the left will be on to the right and the right side elements will be on to the left side here so i mention it the command flip lr so flip left right and to this matlab syntax we provide the input b1 that we have just now accepted as the input from the above step here so this is what we are initializing for the coefficients of low pass filter now after this we require another complementary high pass filter also so let us separate out the script for the same with the help of comment line here so here i shall be mention generation of the complementary high pass filter now for this complementary high pass filter to be generated here we require the specific filter length here so to have the filter length we take capital l as the variable and this filter length should be equal to the length that we have just now defined for the variable b1 with the original elements we have obtained from the command prompt and appending to that the flipped version for left to right side of the same elements here so the length shall be getting doubled here so here for capital l we are going to make the assignment with the help of matlab syntax length here so to this length we provide the input variable capital b1 here now the filter is to be designed so for this particular filter we take the help of for loop for formulation so for for loop we define intermediate variable small k the index variable and that can be initiated at the value 1 and can range up to capital l that is the length of capital b1 the first filter so now for this much of value of small k we are going to formulate the high pass filter by the name b2 and b2 of k the intermediate index variable we have been using is formulated by here we are going to have the assignment of within the parenthesis minus 1 and which is provided the power by k here and this is in multiplication to we have b1 the first filter and in the bracket we are providing k as the index here so ending this particular syntax line with the help of semicolon so now the task is completed for the for loop so for loop should be ended here so for the values of small k starting at 1 up to the complete length of b1 filter we have all this formulation the corresponding values have been computed and it will be residing with the variable b2 now so now we have the two filters so corresponding to these two filters those will be a part of the quadrature mirror filter we have to plot the gains we have to first of all obtain the gains and then plot them so here i shall be separating the matlab script module so here i shall be mentioning to compute the gain responses of the two filters that we have just now worked with that we have initiated or generated here so for this computation purpose as to hold the responses we require the two variables as we are working into the frequency domain so for first filter we are going to have the variable h1z and another variable w 
to represent the frequency domain and to these variables the assignment of the values shall be made by the frequency response as we are usually obtaining with the help of MATLAB syntax FREQ said here. Now as this is for the first filter we shall be providing it the input by capital B1 comma 1 comma here we are having 256 as the input parameters here. Now from these variables the two variables that we have opted we require the absolute value of the H variable and from that absolute value the gain value can be formulated here. So let us have the formulation of small h1. So small h1 can be absolute of the MATLAB syntax ABS providing capital H1 Z as into the transform domain we have used capital H here. And then the decibel values into the gain. So for first filter I shall be making a variable capital G1. So into the decibels the value can be obtained by taking the logarithm and in multiplication to the amplitude 20 here. So here we shall be making the assignment 20 asterisk log to the base 10 of the variable is h1 that just how we have opted into above step here. So this way we have obtained the gain corresponding to the first filter. Now we have to obtain the gain corresponding to the second filter that we have also generated here. So for the second filter we again require the two variables corresponding to the frequency domain. So here we are going to have the result obtained by the variable h2z here comma w is the variable into the frequency domain. Now the assignment shall be again by syntax freq z to obtain the frequency response and as this is for the second filter here second filter is designated by the variable capital B2 here along with capital B2 1 comma 256 we are providing as input here. So now just now we have obtained the frequency response corresponding to the second filter that we have designed here. Now with respect to the second filter the gain responses we have to first of all compute and then plot here. So for the variables that now we have obtained capital H2Z comma W, W to represent the frequency domain here. So here we shall be requiring the computation as small h2. So small h2 can be obtained as the absolute value of capital H2Z value and now as we require the gain to be computed and then further plotted into the decibels here we have to take the logarithm form here. So for the logarithm form here we are making a multiplication of 20 to the logarithm of here inside we are providing small h2 as the variable and this formulation can be assigned to the variable small h2 here small g2 here. So the assignment we have made to the small g2. So this way small g1 and small g2 these are the two variables corresponding to the gains of the two filters here. Now it's a task to have plotting here. So for plotting I just mention a comment. Plotting the gain responses of the two filters. So for plotting purpose the simple command is plot here. So plot plot is the command and now in this particular plot we are providing the input variables as w divided by pi. So this is the representation of the frequency domain here comma here we are providing the values of the first filter gain that is why g1 here. Next to that we are also required to plot corresponding gain values of the filter 2 here. So that is why here we provide first of all a dash within a pair of single quotes and again 
we are going to have w by pi plotted against the value of gain for second filter that is why g2 here after that if we can have the double dashes within the single quotes here and all this plot we want in the grid form so by the next line we can provide labels to the axis here so i just mentioned x label to the x axis here we shall be assigning the representation of slash omega to print the omega symbol here and that is divided by pi in the formulation we have already made it so in the printing part should also be the same here so ending this with the help of semicolon now naming the y axis here so the command is y label and here upon we are going to have the display of gain values hence writing the gain and the gain is mentioned in terms of decibels hence small d capital b is the representation of the unit here so as this is just the plot of the gain responses along with the gain responses we have also to plot the corresponding distortions into the amplitude levels here so here to this particular plot we shall be taking first of all a pause to display the gain responses and after pressing any of the key from the keyboard the corresponding amplitude distortion can be displayed into the same plot here so for that purpose to the next line i shall be mentioning the matlab command pause and then i shall be separating out with the comment line where i shall be write to compute the sum of the squared magnitude responses so here the sum for the magnitudes that we have obtained with the variables h1 and h2 and into the decibels we have made it to g1 and g2 so for the sum we shall be taking for loop here so for for loop we have the index variable i that can be initiated at the value 1 up to 256 as we have utilized in the formulation of the filters the low pass as well as the complementary high pass here so in this for loop as the result we are expecting to be a sum we write the variable to the output to be svm sum here we shall be having the index variable i assigned to it and it can be having computed by the mathematical logic here we shall be writing the addition so within parenthesis here we have first of all small h1 of i in multiplication to again h1 of i so this will be squared the multiplication of the same term with itself will give us a square here and this is added to as we require the sum to the corresponding values of the gain for second filter so here we shall be mentioning h2 of i in the multiplication to again h2 of i here so this is ended and the sum will be accomplished for all the values 1 to 256 hence i complete the for loop with the syntax end here so now the distortion is to be computed so we know the formulation of distortion and the distortion can be computed in terms of decibels by having first of all tan in multiplication to the log to the base tan for the sum that just now we have computed with respect to the skewers so i mentioned svm sum as a variable to input for the logarithm representation so now this is the competition of distortion we have assigned the distortion value to small d as a variable and this distortion is to be now graphically plotted so for that purpose i mentioned here plot the amplitude of or plot the amplitude distortion for above cases or above filters 
so here upon for plotting purpose as we have plotted the gains here we are again having the plot command and now this time the input variables are we require w divided by pi comma this time there is no gain only the distortions hence the variable is small d here we want this plot into the grid form so grid grid and by the next line here we shall provide nomenclature to the axis of this particular plot here so to the x axis we shall be making x label into the use so within a pair of single quotes we shall be expecting the symbol of omega to represent the frequency domain so slash omega here we have in use divided by the pi symbol is to be also printed so slash pi is to be utilized here in the similar fashion y axis can be named by y label and to this y label here we specify the string to be printed that is amplitude distortion and as this distortion is computed in terms of decibels we also specify the unit of measurement that is small d capital B for distortion here. So this way the MATLAB script is completed here. Now it's time to get this particular program saved here. So let us name it by program 2 underscore 19. We save it. Yes, the name has been changed to the editor tab here as well as the file has been created into the current directory. So this is a MATLAB script for demonstration of frequency responses of the QMF filters here. So now we can execute this program. So as we execute this particular program, you can see the command window is having a syntax that has been displayed there. It is mentioning enter the filter coefficients. So let us enter the filter coefficients. So as the coefficients are array in the form here we specify them with the help of square bracket so let us have certain positive values that I get 12 34 56 78 23 then 87 then 13 yes and now hitting the enter so as I hit the enter now first of all we have been provided the gain values corresponding to the filters here so whatever the input values we have specified from the command prompt these values 12 34 56 78 23 87 13 are the filter coefficients and that have been assigned to the capital b1 here the next step of the program you can remember the elements of b1 so these are the seven elements and the flip lr version so the flipped version so right hand side variables will be on to the left hand side left hand side variables elements will be on to the right hand side so the mirror effect will be there so here we have initially the seven elements so the total 14 elements shall be there with the variable b1 the computation of the gains correspondingly will be having and now here we have the plot here so on to the horizontal axis we have the representation as this is the frequency response omega divided by pi and it has ranged from 0 to 1 here now the scale we can know right from 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 up to 0 0.9 and finally up to 1 here the gains we have a plot right from minus 20 decibels to 140 decibels now you can see the plot with the help of two colors here so one is with the blue line another is with the dashed red line here so the corresponding drop down points you can notice for blue line we have the gain value that is 14.66 decibels here we have 2.697 here we have minus 0 0.075 value and at this point here we have the value 13.67 in the second case 
we have the values minus 0 0.1728 here we have 6.209 and now at this point we have 33.76 so this is the plot with respect to the gain now we have to press any of the key onto the keyboard so that the distortion levels for the given input can be printed here so now you can see the change into the same MATLAB window now onto the horizontal axis the scale is the same from 0 to 1 corresponding to omega by pi values here with the same difference level 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 up to 0 0.9 and finally at 1 but onto the vertical axis instead of having the gains plotted we have the plot of amplitude distortion computed into the decibels so right from 25 30 35 up to 60 decibels we have the scale here and here you can see the combined effect of amplitude distortion that we have computed by having the summation of the squares here so this is the particular graph we have obtained for the specified values here so i just close this window run this again so whatever the problems you have from the textbook standard textbook the obtained coefficients for the qmf filters we can provide as input here so i am here first of all providing the random values so in the previous case i have used all the positive values here this time i start with let us say minus 78 then we can have 56 then minus 32 then we have 40 45 then 79 minus 10 so three coefficient values we are providing with the negation and rest of with the positive cases here so hitting the enter we are obtaining a matlab window and in this matlab window again you have the two plots here corresponding to the blue line the continuous line here and a dashed line by the red color here so here we have a plot of gain the values you can note to be for the blue the first one 5.028 here it is 5.765 this one at 20.07 for the another case here we have 44.46 13.27 and 11.58 so as we require to have the amplitude distortion plotted here so here we have this particular plot obtained here so on the vertical axis the amplitude distortion is ranging from 36 to 54 so in this scale here we have the values so this is with respect to the summation of both the filter cases here so 37.71 distortion that has been pointed out at this particular location in this plot uh, at this point here we have 37.91 the peaks here we have up to 53.52 and here also at 53.57 so this is what corresponding to the quadrature mirror filter so this was the simple MATLAB demonstration and by the next lecture we shall again continue to work with the quadrature mirror filter bank here and with that video we shall be concluding the chapter designated for the multi-rate digital signal processing and shall work further into the advanced DSP subject for the random processes here. Thank you.